Did you know that over 5% of the world's population or 430 million people suffer from disabling hearing loss? And that this will only increase in the coming decades? Current hearing devices fail in so-called cocktail party scenarios, when several people are talking at the same time. In such a it situation, a hearing device does not know to do which speaker of the user is coming to intent. As hearing loss leads, for example, to social isolation and loneliness, we does need better and smarter hearing aids and cochlear implants. As such, we need what we call auditory attention decoding algorithms to decode the intended auditory attention from the brainwaves of the user. In this work, we propose a new technique based on Romanian geometry-based classification to decode the spatial focus of auditory attention from the recorded electroencephalogram signals. This will turn out to be yet another successful application of Romanian geometry-based classification in brain-computer interfaces, and as such represents another step towards practically more viable auditory attention decoding. My name is Simon Gernaert, and together with Tom Frankaar and Alexander Bertrand from KU Leuven, we have developed this work. As explained before, we are here dealing with the cocktail party problem, when there are multiple speakers talking simultaneously. However, in that situation, the hearing aid does not know to which of all those speakers the um, or listener or the user actually wants to attend. So that is why we need auditory attention decoding algorithms which leads to what we call smart neural seared hearing devices. So we are using the electrical, the recorded electrical signals from a listener to inform an auditory attention decoding block containing signal processing algorithms to inform and to steer beam formers and so on in the hearing aid to enhance the attended speaker and to suppress all other speakers which are then considered as background noise. The traditional approach towards auditory attention decoding is stimulus reconstruction. In stimulus reconstruction, you apply a spatial temporal decoder on your EEG to reconstruct the attended speech envelope, which is then correlated with the two demixed speech envelopes, demixed from the recorded mixture of speech signals with your microphones on your hearing aid. The one with the highest correlation coefficient is then identified as the attended speaker. However, this traditional approach suffers from a accuracy versus time resolution trade-off. On the y-axis, you here see the AAD accuracy, which is the uh, number of correct decisions which you have made about whether the person was listening to speaker A or to speaker B, versus the decision window. So the amount of data, the amount of EEG and speech time samples you're using to make a decision. Very small windows here result in a very high time resolution meaning that if you would apply this in a sliding window approach, you would be able to very quickly um, detect switches in attention, while very long decision windows result in a very low time resolution. As you can see, this traditional approach has very high accuracies at low time resolution, but very low accuracies at a more relevant high time resolution. And that is why we recently proposed a new approach, which is about decoding the spatial focus of auditory attention from the EEG. So based on a segment of EEG, trying to determine whether the person was focusing its auditory attention to the left or to the right. We therefore used a common spatial pattern decoder, which is a spatial decoder that you apply on your EEG to use to produce features, for example, by the log energy to input in any classifier, in this case, a linear discriminant analysis classifier. In the end, you get a decision about the attended direction. This person in this EEG segment was listening to the left or was listening to the right. If you look at the performance, you can see that the previously mentioned trade-off between accuracy and time resolution is kind of alleviated. The accuracy remains fairly constant across different decision window lengths. However, at very low time resolution, it is still significantly outperformed by, uh, by the traditional approach, stimulus reconstruction approach, while at very high time resolution, there is a, a, a very large gap in favor of this common spatial pattern approach, which is also the most relevant region here at high time resolutions. Now, this common spatial pattern filtering can theoretically be seen as a direct classification of a sample covariance matrix. So if we have a segment of EEG data, 
where we want to determine whether um, this person in this time window was listening to, for example, the left or to the right. So we want to determine the attended direction. First, you compute a covariance matrix. So here it is a spatial covariance matrix, which contains the covariances between your different EEG channels. And where you assume that the covariance matrix when listening to the left has a different coloring than when listening to the right. What then happens is in, um, in, in such an analysis, the covariance matrix will be vectorized and will be used as a feature vector in any classifier that you like. This can be an LDA classifier or as we used in this work now, a linear support vector machine classifier. Now, in this pipeline, there is an inherent mismatch between this covariance matrix and this feature vector that you use for your classifier. And that is that covariance matrices are symmetric positive definite matrices which live on a differentiable Riemannian manifold, while an SVM classifier assumes a Euclidean space of the feature space. So there is a mismatch between the nature of those two components while you ignore this completely by directly vectorizing a covariance matrix and using it as a feature vector. Euclidean distances, which are assumed or which are used by your classifier, do, do then not very well approximate Riemannian distances between your original covariance matrices. And that is why we need an extra step within this pipeline. We need an extra step to bridge the gap between the covariance matrix and between your input feature vector for your classifier. And that is why we resort to remaining geometry-based classifiers, which are popularized in brain-computer interfaces in the work of Alexandre Branchon. So, as I explained before, covariance matrices live on this gray Riemannian, differentiable Riemannian manifold. It's differentiable, which means that at each point, we can compute a tangent space, which will be a Euclidean space. What we then do is project each covariance matrix onto the tangent space, which is computed at one single point. And that single point is the Riemannian or geometric mean across your training set. Euclidean distances in this tangent space will then approximate Riemannian distances of your original distance metric. So the tangent space mapping, which can be computed with this matrix logarithm um, um, operation, then serves as an intermediate step to translate the Riemannian structure of your covariance matrices to something that, we can, that can be used safely in a Euclidean space by, uh, for example, an SVM classifier. The only thing we need to do is to project this Riemannian um, or this covariance matrix onto the tangent space computed at the geometric or Riemannian mean of your training set. Let's have a look at the results. On the y-axis, you again see the AAT accuracy, and on the x-axis, the decision window. We're using only a few time samples, results in high time resolution, where long decision window lengths result in low time resolution. In gray, you again see the traditional stimulus reconstruction approach, which suffers from this accuracy decision window length trade-off. In blue, you have the state-of-the-art common spatial pattern approach to decode the spatial focus of attention. In orange, you see the results for the newly proposed remaining geometry-based classifier with the intermediate tangent space map. First of all, you can see that this RGC method outperforms the CSP method on average with 6 or 7% in accuracy. So taking this remaining structure of covariance matrices into account indeed results in a um, significant improvement. Secondly, you can see, however, that the RGC method has a, a decreasing accuracy at very high time resolution. When only using a few time samples to compute covariance matrices, you need to use regularization and so on to compensate for the ill conditioning of uh, sample covariance matrices. This introduces an extra bias and so on. So the worst covariance matrix computation that results in lower AAD accuracies. This could be resolved for in, uh, in part by using, for example, smart dimensionality reduction techniques or feature selection, but we didn't employ these methods in this paper. However, thirdly, now the RGC method outperforms the traditional stimulus reconstruction approach across almost all decision window lengths. So it's not beneficial to take the seamless reconstruction approach um, um, for low time resolutions, which was the case when comparing it to the CSP approach. To conclude, in this work, 
we have extended the state-of-the-art common spatial pattern approach to decode the spatial focus of attention to a remaining geometry-based classification, taking the remaining structure of covariance matrices into account. This resulted in a significant improvement in performance to decode the auditory attention, and as such, hopefully represents another step to smarter and better hearing devices to help those 430 million people suffering from disabling hearing.